because it's always hot in the AC. Turn up the AC. You are listening to Turn Up the AC on Ustream.com, as well as you can find us on AugustusChoice.com. I am your host, Kenny Adams, and today, doing this until about 1.30 today, uh, we will be broadcasting live here, talking about all the great stuff that is going on in the Augusta area. Um, again, I am your host, Kenny Adams, from AugustusChoice.com, and uh, yeah, we are broadcasting. This is our second show, uh, the second show that we have started every Tuesday. We will be broadcasting uh, from uh, the home studio, the AC headquarters, and uh, yeah, we got some really good stuff to talk about today. Um, we have a lot to cover. A lot's gone on in the past little bit. Um, we're going to talk about f a few things first here. Uh, let's talk about where you can find us. You can find us on twitter.com. Uh, you can find us at twitter.com slash Augustus Choice. Uh, we we do a lot of tweeting, a lot of updates for the people in the area, um, and we also like to retweet a lot of the stuff that gets put out there. Um, Twitter is really handy, especially, I mean, you can put it on your mobile phone, you can carry it anywhere, um, and yeah, we like to talk to uh, just about every, everybody that uh, interacts with us. Twitter is really good for interacting uh, with your audience, which is what we do uh, we try to do often. Um, you can also find us on, uh, actually, we started our own paper, if you will, um, quote unquote, uh, the paper using uh, paper.ly. If you've never heard of paper.ly, uh, what it does is it aggregates all the uh, information that you put out there as well as the people that you follow on Twitter. Um, for people that don't understand how Twitter works, you can follow uh, other people's updates which is really, really cool. Um, but uh, what we do is uh, we aggregate all the information that comes out from all the people that we follow on Twitter, and it gets put into a nice little paper format, uh, if you will, like a digital newspaper. And our, the way we like to look at it is, you know, the people in the area, they really want to be able to uh, read stuff that's relevant to them. And a lot of times they what's relevant to users is uh, things that, they talk about things that they like. So uh, Paperly is really, really cool because it's now giving us the ability to uh, share your stuff and your content with the community at large. So that is something that we like to do uh, for you as well. Um, you can find us on Facebook.com. Uh, that's Facebook.com slash Augustus Choice. And with that, we do a lot of interaction, uh, more so than Twitter, I would say. Um, but that's actually picking up. Um, on Facebook, you know, we try to do things a little bit differently than just about anybody else you'll see in town. You know, we like to take, like, for instance, we just uh, had a nice long run of our uh, photographers that follow uh, us. You know, we have a lot of freelance, a lot of uh, amateur and professional photographers in the area take some great shots of the CSRA as a whole. So what we do with that is is we take their pictures and they submit them to the wall and we then turn around and put them uh, up for people to be able to appreciate. And I do know that um, we've seen some people from like the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, I saw some people uh, from the canal mentioning that uh, they wanted to get in contact with some of these photographers that have taken pictures uh, because they loved the way they looked. And you never know, something that gets posted on Augustus Choice uh, might lead to you getting your work put out uh, for the, you know, for the nation to see. So that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, we do a lot of cool things on Facebook. We do run a lot of contests. Um, we have, you know, we're going to be doing some ticket giveaways uh, here in the next little bit. I'm really excited about uh, that. And we'll be talking a little bit later on in the show uh, with um, one of the represent representatives from the James Brown Arena. Uh, Emily Dunaway will join us a little bit later on today, um, but uh, you know we'll, we'll come across that a little bit later on. Uh, but also uh, something I saw a tweet come through uh, on Twitter the other day. Actually, I think it was, might have even been this morning uh, from Chris Harrison, and he was mentioning that uh, he you know he's noticing that Reddit is. Uh, starting to pick up for the Augusta area as well. Now, if you don't know what Reddit is, I'm going to give you a little bit of information. Reddit is a social news website. Uh, pretty much, you know, anybody that signs up for a Reddit account, obviously it's free, uh, they can go and take 
um, any type of link that they like, something that they think is relevant, something that they think is cool, uh, something that they did themselves. You know, there is a lot of self-promotion that does go on Reddit. Um, and uh, now you have things called subreddits. Now, what a subreddit is, is it's a nice uh, little niche, if you will, of you know, different content. So for instance, there is a subreddit for Augusta that has, that has nothing but Augusta and Augusta centric items in it, Augusta centric links, um, whether it's a picture that was taken, uh, downtown or whether or not, uh, there's information about, uh, what's going on in the area. Um, you, you know, there's people that, and we'll talk about this also in a little bit, uh, but people talking about that, uh, and I'm doing the air quotes here, flash mob that, uh, happened, uh, downtown that is, you know, signaling the new, uh, the, or the Westabu Festival, uh, ticket sales. Now, I, as much as, as cool as I think that is, that they were able to organize that and do that, you know, right down in the middle of, I think that happened on 10th, 10th and Broad. I think that was really, really cool that they were able to organize that. But the thing is, they're calling it a flash mob. And something that was discussed on Reddit was that, you know, Technically, you wouldn't really call it a flash mob because flash mobs are supposed to be spontaneous and there was a whole bunch of spectators sitting there watching and they were expecting something. Um, now, I'm not slamming it because, again, I think it's absolutely really, really cool what they did uh, and was able to um, you know, put together, especially in such a short notice uh, uh, for, you know, get everybody congregated there. So maybe technically you could still call it a flash mob, being that, you know, there wasn't really all that much advanced information put out there. Um, but still, the video for the flash mob got posted on uh, Reddit. So if you go to reddit.com slash r slash Augusta, and I'll put this link up on the um, on AugustusChoice.com as well as on Facebook. Uh, we really want to, you know, bring up our digital, uh, the digital uh, contributors in the Augusta area, not just to AugustusChoice.com, but also to um, uh, also to Reddit. And you know, we're really trying to again be, you know, big uh, proponents of the good stuff that happens in the area. You know, if you got some, you know, if you have a band, you know, I've been uh, tweeting back and forth with a couple of people from ASU. Uh, lately, and I'm looking for some of the local musicians, and I've talked with uh, Jonathan Caro uh, from uh, Rock Bottom Music and Devrin from Rock Bottom Music about getting connected with some of the uh, musicians in town as well. Um, I need to talk to Cliff Bennett from um, uh, who, who works over at Clear Channel, and he does uh, 105.7. He uh, is in a band that I actually had the pleasure of playing drums for for two songs. You know, I, I'm a two-song wonder uh, with them down at Joe's Underground. Uh, their band was a redhead step, Redheaded Stepchild. Um, and, you know, they're a great band. Uh, so we're going to start getting some local musicians to send us their music so that we can, in turn... Add that to, uh, you know, we, we want to review some of your music. We want to let the Augusta area hear some of your stuff. So that is something that we're going to be running next, uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. But I uh, wanted to get to a little bit of uh, news, some stuff really quick before we move on to our first caller. Um, we have uh, news coming from WRDW. Uh, thank you, WRDW. I saw this uh, come through on Facebook that uh, the ASU president, uh, William A. Bloodworth Jr., is retiring. He is the president of ASU. He is retiring, and as of 2013, he is going to be um, converting over to teaching English and American studies. Now, tell me this. If it were you, and you were signing up for a class for, you know, and you're looking to see who your English professor is, and you find that it's Professor Bloodworth, Okay, now I'm probably I'm new to the area relatively. I've been here for about three years, so I mean I wouldn't say that I'm super new, but you know I'm still kind of fresh in comparison to the people that have lived here for a while. And you know honestly, if I had a teacher named uh, Professor Bloodworth, that sounds like something out of Sherlock Holmes. Um, but it sounds pretty hardcore. Uh, you know, he, he can automatically strike some fear in, uh, to his students, uh, just based on his name alone. But yes, yeah, so, uh, President, uh, Bloodworth, congratulations on, I think it said something like 48 years worth of, uh, worth of teaching experience. I mean, that's a long time to be, you know, instructing, 
people and you know you know providing them with education and now he's not you know completely and totally retiring in general he's just you know change he's changing things up a little bit for himself he just wants to go back to teaching which i think is very admirable very cool um i'm glad that uh we still have people that are dedicated to teaching uh t teaching students because you know we always still can learn a little bit more um, but yeah, so that was, you know, that's something that I saw in the news. We've already covered, um, uh, we've covered the, um, let's see, uh, well, not only that, but we've also covered the uh, flash mob that happened down uh, downtown, and uh, it looks like we have someone on the line right now, and I do believe that it is, uh, who's on the line right now? Hey, Kenny, it's Aubrey. It is Aubrey Nazaro from Earth Fair. How are you doing today, Aubrey? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So, uh, everybody, I have on the line right now Aubrey Nazaro from Earth Fair, in, which is in Martinez. Uh, you can find them at 368 Fury's Ferry Road, um, and they're open Monday through Sunday at 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what you got for us today, Aubrey? Well, you know, I've got a quick little thing just to add to it. Um, I wanted to mention that Two things. One, we've got um, our good old day dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. We're at eight ninety nine. Gets you um, a prime rib dinner. So prime rib, potatoes, veggies. You can't be eight ninety nine for a slice of grass fed prime rib. So we've got that going on tonight got from the prime rib again. to seven thirty. And we do also have a vegetarian option available. Um, so we're trying to make sure we've got something for everyone. Very cool. Yep, so we got that going on tonight. And uh, in addition, we've also got um, a coupon. Last week we had a coupon with our um, good old day dinner. They got you like $2 off of steaks in our meat department. And I believe this week um, with every meal purchase, we've also got coupons for I think $2 off per pound on all wild salmon. Nice. So um, our wild salmon's already on sale. So it's kind of a killer deal because um, I think it's already on sale probably about $3 off, then you have the $2 off coupon. So basically you're paying $5 off per pound on any wild salmon. So it's wow. a killer deal. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So we got that. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on real quick was um, right now we are running the Earth Bear Bag Box Win Contest. Um, last Let's see, not last April, but the April before that, we um, said, hey, let's celebrate Earth Day. We're going to take out all plastic from our store as far as shopping bags are concerned uh -huh. um, to really, like, try and make a difference. And we emphasize the use of reusable bags. Well, now with the Bag Box Win program, what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of paper bags being used. Very cool. And so when someone comes in our store, and this is now through September, um, every week, with each transaction, a cashier will hand you a slip for our bag box win raffle contest. Every week, there's a different um, gift basket. This week's theme is south of the border. Um, it's valued at $100 with all this awesome product in it. And every week, um, each transaction will get you a raffle slip into the drawing. So cool. we've already done like four winners, and we're going to do it now through September. And it's just a really great way to remind people to say, hey, you know, reuse, use a reusable bag. We've got tons of cardboard boxes that people could use in lieu of paper bags. So once again, now we've eliminated, we've eliminated plastics, and now we're working on reducing paper. So it's a really great way to get something for free and also do something great for the environment. Very, very cool. Now, uh, now, if someone does happen to have uh, some paper bags, you guys do have the uh, bins for recycling, correct? Um, we have the ability to recycle the paper. We don't have for plastic anymore. Okay. We have literally just taken that completely out of the equation. Um, nice. And a lot of times the plastic bags that we would get um, would have – tears in them and they wouldn't be reusable anyway gotcha. so we said you know what they're not reusable we're still kind of encouraging their use so at this point no we don't want anybody using those bags um we want to make you know make it known that hey plastic is just not okay 
to use. It just never goes away. We're going to have it forever. You know, uh, it, it, I wonder why uh, you find that still some of the, I mean, it's probably still uh, cheapest for them, uh, at least uh, at the forefront, for a lot of the big box stores to still be using plastic, knowing what it does to the environment. Yeah, that is the big one, is that it is a lot cheaper and it does cost a lot more for us to carry just the paper bags. But, you know, a big thing that we found when we cut out the plastic bags is that a lot of people were totally okay with it, if not thanking us, saying, right. I'm really glad you stopped doing this. I wish more places would do that. So, you know, we've got this one earth, we got to take care of it, and this is just our next step to doing so. I mean, it's gotten to the point to where it's uh, ended up completely and totally being phased out of people asking uh, paper or plastic. You know, I mean, for, you know, when I was growing up, we still had, you know, had at least an option. But now they're just like, you know, no paper for you. It's just straight plastic now. Um, so I like the fact that, you know, at Earth Fair, uh, you know, you can go in. You know, if you have a bag, you know, a reusable bag that you can bring yourself, uh, then, you know, by all means, use it. Um, but if not, you know, you do have, uh, you know, these other options available to you that don't include plastic. Um, oh, yeah. We've got tons of cardboard boxes and things for people to take. There's no sense in us just throwing those away. We get them every day, every time, you know, we put anything on the shelf, we're left with a cardboard box. So, you know, right. we're repurposing those. And then, you know, for people that say, oh, well, I always forget my bags at home, we've got small little compact bags They probably... Um, when they're all together, you know, it, it scrunches inside itself. And when it's inside mm -hmm. itself like that, it's about the size of, like, my fist, and I'm five feet tall. <laughs> so uh, if that gives anybody any sort of an idea of how small these are, you can just carry them in your purse. You always have them on you. So. Well, Mrs. Augusta's Choice, she's out. Uh, actually, she decided to go do some food shopping right now, and she has hours. Otherwise, I'd show uh, the viewers. Um, the actual bags themselves they are seriously they compact down to about like say that big and i can fit those things in uh my cargo pocket uh in my pants um i mean those, they are really really cool how they will you know compact down you don't have to worry about lugging around all this extra stuff it's really really cool so um yeah i think that earth air is definitely taking uh leaps and bounds uh to try to help out the environment uh trying to help out local farmers local um uh, you know, just local providers of uh, all sorts of materials. I mean, you guys even have, uh, you guys do feature uh, local artists up on your wall, correct? We sure do. We've actually got um, some photography right now in our cafe by um, Tyler Ashland. She and her family shop here all the time. And the crazy thing is you wouldn't know it by looking at her photography. It's just fantastic. She's got an eye for it. But she's, um, she's a young teen in school. So, Very cool. you know, it's, we had, we've got people of all ages, all walks of life, you know, all sorts of mediums, and, um, you know, it just kind of dresses up the cafe a little bit, gives people something really nice to look at, um, us in the parking lot. So. Right, right. Well, um, next time you talk to her, tell her to uh, post up some of the pictures on Augusta Choice, and we'll feature them as our profile picture. Absolutely, I will. She's, a, like I said, she's a, a really talented young lady, and uh, both, like I said, her family she and her family shop here all the time. I see them oftentimes making multiple trips. I said, did I see you earlier, mm -hmm. or am I just imagining it? <laughs> and so, yeah, it's um, addicting. Yeah, uh, I'll let her know. Awesome. Well, Aubrey, we will see you for uh, family dinner night on Thursday night, which happens every Thursday night uh, from, is it 4.30 to 8.30? No, it's 4 to 8. 4 to 8. Um, and... The dinner tonight, the Tuesday night good old days dinner, is from 4.30 to 7.30. All right, very cool. I don't know whether or not I'll be able to make it tonight, but I will definitely be out there Thursday night for the family uh, family night as well as the AC meetup that happens uh, each Thursday night. Uh, per one paying adult, up to six kids eat free. People, that is a steal. You need to go out there. All right, looking forward to seeing you. Thank you so much, Arby. It was good talking to you. You too, Kenny. All right, talk to you later. All right, well, that was Aubrey Nazaro from Earth Fair. Uh, she called in on the phone line, which is sponsored by Vern's Towing. 
which you can find them at vernstowingservice.com. Uh, reach them at 706-790-1209. Um, but, yes, that was Aubrey from Earth Fair, and she was uh, telling us about some of the cool things they are, they've got going. We'll put some more information on the blog post about uh, this new promotion that they're doing uh, with uh, the raffle tickets. It's really, really cool how, they're, uh, how they have it set up. Um, again, we'll have more information put on the blog about that. Coming up in about five minutes, we're going to have uh, Emily Dunaway from the James Brown Arena giving a call in. She is going to be talking about some of the new things that are coming to the Augusta Entertainment Complex. And I found out something a little bit earlier uh, yesterday about one of the things that they have coming and it, it well I'll, I won't give it away I'll let her talk about it but um, you know going back really quick to Earth Fair um, we go there every you know well we go there more than once a week but uh, we definitely are there every Thursday night now for families that are on a budget it's uh, you guys have to understand uh, you know that there are alternatives to going to all these fast food restaurants because a you're not getting uh, true health uh, you know true uh, healthy food that's good for you. Um, at Earth Fair, you know, you, you have, you know, all organic, um, you, they have, uh, vegan and they also have, um, like gluten-free, uh, items there. Cause my family, we, you know, my family has predominantly a gluten intolerance and we really have to, uh, be careful with what we buy and what we shop for, um, as well as, you know, like peanut allergies and things like that. So, at Earth Fair, you know, they have things labeled to let you know exactly what you're going to be getting. Um, and, I mean, it's a, it's a really, really nice place to go um, during, you know, whenever you're going out shopping. And, honestly, the prices, if people are worried, oh, well, you know, buying healthy food is so much more expensive. It really isn't. It, uh, I mean, it's actually rather comparable, especially when, I mean, now, of course, you're not going to be looking at buying stuff in bulk like you would at Sam's, but really, how many, uh, how many of us need a tub of mayo that's, like, that big and, like, that big around? That's just nonsense. Um, but what you do is you go in there and you, you know, plan ahead, uh, get a nice little shopping list. It's right on Fury's Ferry Road. Um, you're really close to everything uh, in that area. And yes, then your children will bug you to go over to Monkey Joe's afterwards because um, that's what happens with my kids every single time we go. So we're going to Monkey Joe's, right? Not today. Um, but uh, yes, again, we have uh, Earth Fair as uh, a regular call-in each week. Um, she is, Aubrey is... Uh, the marketing manager over at Earth Fair, and it's really, really great place to go, guys. So, um, but I'm going to shut up about Earth Fair right now. We're going to talk a little bit about what's coming up to the James Brown Arena here in about two minutes. The James Brown Arena. Um, I've been working uh, with them a little bit here for the past couple of months. We've done some ticket giveaways. We gave away uh, some Disney Live tickets not too long ago. Uh, we also gave away some tickets to see Kevin Hart. And then coming up, we also have the um, uh, the Riverhawks season that's coming up. Now, when I first moved here, now I'm married, Miss, Mrs. Augusta Choice, she is Canadian. And so, obviously, it's a prerequisite for Canadians to love hockey. So when we first moved here, we had uh, the um, uh, the Augusta Lynx here. And we actually did the website for the Lynx before they went under, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we absolutely loved it. The kids loved it. They had a blast. Hockey was missing in the Augusta area for a while, and then the Riverhawks have come back, and they have a nice uh, big marketing campaign behind them. It was really, really good to see them back up, and I can't wait for this season coming up. We'll be doing some ticket giveaways for them. Uh, you know, if you've never been to the James Brown Arena, and if you're listening and you're not from this area, you guys are missing out because it's a great facility. Uh, same with the Bell Auditorium. The entire Augusta Entertainment Complex is really, uh, I mean, it's fascinating just to walk in there and see a huge, uh, huge arena. And that's something that we have that, you know, some of the other area, surrounding areas don't, um, you know, and they have a great staff. Um, and we are really, really looking at getting some uh, great shows coming to the area. Um, and I can't wait to see what they have coming up. Uh, and I believe right now on the line with us, we have... Emily Dunaway. Emily, is that you? Hello? I think Emily may have dropped off. Let's see if we can get her one more time. Emily, is that you? 
All right, we'll go ahead and give her an opportunity to go ahead and give a call back in in a second. Um, but, uh, Emily, we will be looking for you to give a call in. Um, she is going to be, again, uh, she works over at the Augusta Entertainment Complex, and she is going to be uh, speaking with us a little bit about what is going on down at the complex. And let's see if we have her again. Emily, is that you? It's me. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Everybody Yay! on the line right now, we have Emily Dunaway from the Augusta Entertainment Complex. How are you doing today, Emily? I'm fabulous. How are you? I am doing good. Thank you for uh, calling into the show today. Um, everybody, again, online is uh, Miss Emily Dunaway from the Augusta Entertainment Complex. You can go down to 601 7th Street uh, in downtown Augusta, and their website is, well, you can go to Georgia Line of Ticks. And we'll put that link up on Augustus Choice as well as on Facebook so that you guys can go buy tickets to your heart's content because that's what we want. Right, Emily? Absolutely. Absolutely. We've got a lot going on. So well, you can always find out exactly what's going on at um, georgialinetics.com. Now, I was teasing uh, the listeners a few minutes ago and actually at the very beginning of the show as well uh, about some of the things that you and I discussed previously. Uh, what do you have going on at the uh, complex coming up here this season? Well, we have um, a couple things coming up real, real soon here. I mean, this Saturday we have Keith Urban. Keith Urban. We all. Mm-hmm. That's this Saturday. We also have the fourth annual Smooth Music Festival. Very nice. That's coming up September second. We have Disney Live October sixth. But what we just announced is our fantastic um, Broadway series. The Broadway series. Mm-hmm. Jazz hands. Yeah, and we we just announced it, and it's um, it's four fantastic shows. Um, we've got Young Frankenstein this year. Really, Mamma Mia, mm-hmm. Young Frankenstein. Oh, that's which awesome! Is hilarious. If, if anybody's ever seen it, it's really great. Um, Mamma Mia is back this year. Nice. That was com- completely sold out last time it last time it came, and it's back this year. My Fair Lady, and also the um, the farewell tour of Riverdance will happen. Wait, wait, wait. Fair, the farewell tour? Yeah. Th- th- they're done? They're done. Yeah, this is, this is their farewell tour. It's, they've been going strong for years and years, and, and this is um, their last tour that they're doing, and we're lucky to have them here in Augusta. Wow, I did not know that. That's, that's mm-hmm. crazy talk. I mean, when was it announced that uh, they were done? Um, we got the information um, through the theater council, so mm-hmm. I don't know when they made the decision, but um, it came out in our press release that this was their farewell tour. Oh wow! Well, uh, well, you know, we should be we should feel privileged that we're going to be getting the farewell farewell tour of uh, Riverdance here at uh, uh, at the now is this going to be at the James Brown Arena or is this going to be at the That's Bell? That- that's going to be at the Bell Auditorium. All of our Broadway series are, is at the Bell. And if you've never had a chance to see River Dance, you know, this is, this is your last chance, and it is amazing. It's, it's just amazing. I mean, if, you've, if you've never had a chance to see it, you really need to get tickets for this one. Now, River Dance, is, is, is River Dance the one where the guy is, like, shirtless and he has, like, the, the cummerbund and he always ends up with, like, his hands, like, in the, in the Hulk Hogan pose where he's kind of just, like, kind of stretched out a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> there's a lot of different um, types of dance that are um, that are showcased in River Dance, but that's the the main type is is the Irish the Irish dancing. Right. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Now, uh, yeah. with uh, I'm, I want to talk a little bit more about the Broadway shows that are going to be coming through. Now, uh, are these uh, how long? Um, like, do you guys get the Broadway uh, series every single year? We we have uh huh we've had it for I guess um, three seasons now. All right. And and um, every season it seems like our, our shows have just gotten bigger and better. Uh, you know, last season we had um, Color Purple and we had Blue Man Group, which was great. And we just uh, have a really great um, relationship with the theater council, and they love the Bell Auditorium. They love performing there, and we've just have this really good rep, uh, relationship 
with the theater council that we've created over the years, and they love coming back, and we love having them. And um, I think we are lucky here in Augusta to be able to have these, you know, these these Broadway shows. Absolutely. Um, and with the uh, now, are the tickets on sale now? You can get season tickets now. Season tickets so that you can go and see all four of the shows are available now, and you can get those tickets. Um, not on our website, but if you go to um, Broadway in Augusta, GA.com, mm-hmm. and that information is on our website, okay. or you can call 1-888-706-BWAY. So it's 888-706-BWAY, and you can get your season tickets. So individual tickets will go on sale about six weeks out from each individual show. Okay. Very, very mm-hmm. cool. So you can get uh, the season tickets for the Broadway series. Um, we'll go ahead and put the phone number as well as the link that Emily uh, mentioned on the line again. Everybody is Emily Dunaway from the Augusta Entertainment Complex. Um, and uh, th- Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the box office number, correct? 706-722-3521. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. and uh, you guys there again October sixth, um, and this one sticks out in my mind because we did the ticket giveaway. We have a um, Disney Live coming to uh, the complex, and there are tons of other great shows that are that are about to happen. I know Keith Urban is this weekend, um, and there's just you know they have a lot going on down there. If you've never been down or seen a show or gone to an event. Uh, there is a lot going on, and we have great stuff that happens right downtown at the Bell Auditorium and the James Brown Arena. Emily, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Um, do you have anything else that's going on down down there? Um, well, we did just announce um, Ricky Smiley and Friends is going to be at the Bell Auditorium on November 12th. Ricky so that's, uh, Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's one that we just announced. So November 12th. Ricky Smiley will be at the Bell Auditorium. And also, um, um, the number that you gave is actually our main number. Okay. The number to our, the number to our box office, mm-hmm. um, you can get, um, w- you can call that number that you just gave, and that'll get you to our, our number. But if you want to purchase tickets over the phone, uh-huh. you can call um, 877-4- a U G T I X. All right, eight seven seven four A U G T I X. That's if you That's want to call. It. There you go. Well, Emily, again, thank you so much for uh, calling in. Uh, it was great speaking with you. We will be checking in with you every once in a while to see how things are going. And uh, awesome. yeah, thank you for calling in. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Good we'll talk, talk later. Again. All right. All bye-bye. right. Bye. That on the line, we had Emily Dunaway from the Augusta Entertainment Complex. She gave us some great information. I did not know that this was the last season of Riverdance. That's, I mean, I remember when Riverdance first came out, and that was a, that was a pretty big deal. Um, and now it's, I mean, I guess all good things must come to an end. Uh, but um, we will be able to have that right here at the uh, James Brown Arena uh, coming up soon. That is at the Broadway series for the um, James Brown, uh, that you can find at the James Brown Arena. Again, we will post links on how you can pick up your season passes. Now, I actually, uh, when I was growing up, my first job, and I'm going to give a shout out to uh, the Raiders um, and you know who you are, um, back in Flagler Palm Coast, um, I was, my first job was actually working as a, uh, the fly operator. If you ever watch a Broadway show or just, uh, play in general and you see scenery, uh, come, f- uh, flying down and it's, you know, it's like a backdrop. It's normally, you know, like a painted canvas, or if you see, um, you know, part of the scenery actually come out from above that is uh, controlled by what's called a fly system, and I was a fly operator, and um, you know, because I'm so fly, pop collar, um, and I lowered those myself. Um, those, uh, you know, a lot goes into it, and if you've never been backstage, I encourage you to find out a way to see whether or not you can at least tour a backstage of um, during uh, production, because it's really fascinating. All the moving and working parts, uh, putting it all together, it is rather um, intricate. 
it's and it's really really cool to see how they do it um but you know that was my first job they have that coming to the arena i'm really excited we'll get more information about that uh as time progresses because uh they have i mean we have great entertainment yes we have a lot of small clubs um and performance areas in the csra as a whole uh but you know finding some of the quality of the larger shows uh at the james brown arena we are very fortunate to be able to have that here in town so that's really really cool um and then now changing tracks a little bit i want to talk about something that happened this past saturday this past Saturday, um, I was invited by Daryl Roll from Dapper & Company, one of uh, our longtime sponsors. And he invited me to uh, be part of the Walk for Lupus that was put on by um, Skip to My Lupus, Inc. They are a nonprofit here in town that is uh, there to raise awareness, provide support for people that have lupus. And uh, if you don't know what lupus is, it is a uh, it, it is a chronic disease that um, it, it just doesn't go away. You can't get it. You know, it's not like contagious or anything like that. It's you know passed down from parents to children. Uh, causes fatigue, muscle pain, uh, joint pain. People that and you know there is unfortunately a fatality rate with it. And you know, so I went out. Daryl asked me to be a part of the walk. It was very. Uh, it was very humbling. There was a lot of people that showed up. I wasn't expecting that large of a turnout just because I wasn't uh, aware. You know, it, I wasn't sure what to expect, really, I should say. And when I got there, there was a lot of people at the mall. It was uh, 8.30, or I got there at about 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, um, maybe a little bit earlier, and the food court was packed. I mean, that's where everybody was congregating. There were several different teams, if you will, that had uh, color-coded shirts, and um, they were all walking for either a group of people or a, one person in particular to show their support for someone that is suffering or unfortunately lost the battle to lupus. So um, I went out and I shot some video. Uh, the latest episode of In Augusta that you can find on AugustusChoice.com slash ACTV or you can find it on uh, YouTube.com slash AugustusChoice. I shot a video and I got had a chance to speak with some of uh, the people that were there walking, and one really, really touched my heart. It was a, um, a husband and wife and their daughter who had lost their oldest daughter to lupus. She had passed away right after high school uh, due to uh, the disease, and it's just really hard seeing you know people going through the you know going through something like that. But it's really good that Augusta has something set up to be able to provide that type of support and provide that type of um, uh, you know, to, to, again, to just pro provide that type of support for the people that are suffering from the disease. Um, in the next uh, few minutes, we're going to be having uh, our resident uh, registered nurse, uh, Beth Barranco, call in, and she's going to actually speak to us a little bit more about lupus, help educate us a little bit about uh, the disease. Um, it's going to. She, she is also. You can find her on Healthy You, which. Uh, broadcasts on NBC. She'll tell us a little bit more about that. But again, go to um, AugustusChoice.com and the top post is currently right now about uh, the Walk for Lupus. It is, again, the episode of In Augusta. It's about a four-minute video um, with a little bit of information covering the day. Uh, thank you to Daryl for uh, from Dapper & Company for uh, inviting me out to walk. Thank you uh, to Skip to My Lupus for putting on a great event um unfortunately it didn't seem like it was really covered by too many other people which again i don't understand this is something that is good for the community something that's actually no it's great for the community and it, there needs to be more eyes on this um i do know that wbbq was a sponsor uh and they were out there so you know good job good on you guys for uh going out there and showing some support um you know there was uh all walks of life there were young kids that were out there uh showing support there were elderly people and when they got all the teams ready and everything organized uh chick-fil-a had uh provided uh free breakfast for everybody there was uh some gourmet coffee that was out um i mean there was just a bunch of people that were all ready to do it and when they said all right let's go ahead and get the walk going everybody got went down to the lower level of the mall and they walked for, uh, and you know i walked as well it went from i went till about uh 11 o'clock 
And, you know, it's just, again, there to raise awareness. Of course, people were asking questions. People were wondering, you know, why are all these people in these color-coded shirts uh, walking around the bottom of the mall? You know, I mean, uh, the upper level you had the normal mall walkers, which a lot of them, uh, from what I was told, uh, wanted to actually stop walking upstairs. And they came downstairs and they joined in on the walk. Um, you know, it was nice uh, to see everybody coming together, working together. Uh, to try to make this a better place and this a better area and to help those in need. There's tons, and I mean tons, of uh, nonprofits in the area uh, that are trying to do things just like Skip to My Lupus, um, which, you know, that na- I, I absolutely love that name for it. But if you go to AugustusChoice.com, uh, under our resources section, you'll be able to see all of the... Um, uh, you'll f- find a place called social services. You click that, and we've comprised a list of all uh, every single social service that you can think of for the Augusta area, all put together in one nice, neat little list. Um, we know there's a lot of people that have uh, put it out there, and um, and they're using it as a resource for themselves. I think it's really cool that people are doing that. Feel free to link to it as much as you want. Use it as you know a little pocket resource for yourself. Um, it, it's really good to find what you need. You know, we're trying to provide as much of a service as possible to everybody out there. Um, but uh, I know personally some of the nonprofits that I've interacted with myself, uh, like um, uh, Interfaith, which is a really, really cool uh, little nonprofit here in town, which I'm going to try to get some more information out there about it for you guys. Uh, what Interfaith does is um, they're... they're they, they focus on more than just the homeless, uh, one homeless person. They focus on uh, homeless families uh, that have, you know, they've lost their home for whatever reason. Uh, they're, they have no place really to go, so they hook up with Interfaith. And Interfaith actually will, um, through a network of churches, house families, help them get back on their feet, get them working toward um, boosting themselves into being able to not be homeless anymore. It's a really, really good service. I'm going to give a quick shout out to Miss Roberta Terry. She was one of the first people that introduced me to Interfaith. And uh, maybe for the next show, and if not the next one, the one after that, I'll try to get Interfaith on the line so they can tell us a little bit more about it. Because, it, it, again, it's just a really, really good service. And who knows, maybe we'll turn that into a regular segment where we talk to a nonprofit each week. Um, again, uh, you guys are listening to Turn Up the AC on AC uh, on Ustream. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Augustus Choice. Uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash Augustus Choice. You know, I picked a uh, name when we first started out to make sure that there was... Um, uh, to make sure that no, no one else had it yet. And, you know, we were able to go and grab all the other names for all the different uh, social networks before it started out. Um, but going back to what we were talking about with the lupus, I think right now on the line we have our resident registered nurse, Miss Beth Branco. Beth, are you on the line? Good afternoon, Kenny. How are you today? I'm doing good. Everybody give a round of applause. I know you, well, I'm the only one clapping. We have we have Beth Brink on the line right now from, uh, well, she is a registered nurse in the area, and she is actually going to be talking to us today a little bit about uh, lupus um, to give us a little... Uh, yeah. Well, t- tell us, what knowledge are you going to bestow upon us today? Well, I, I just want to also give props to you for your um, coverage on the walk for lupus that they had out in the mall out went on your page and looked at it and saw your video. That was a great video. And I will tell you, the um, the husband and the wife that lost their daughter right after high school graduation, um, that just, just it really touched me. Um, it just shouldn't be that families have to go through that. And, um, I, you know, it really brought tears to my eyes to watch them and to hear them talk about her. Um, lupus, unfortunately, is just not, um, it's just not, known well enough um, by people and so many people are affected by lupus which to me is amazing that you know not more is done about lupus Um, you know lupus is a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease meaning that your body's immune system attacks your own tissues and organs so your body fighting your body and um, it affects so many different body systems and organs and um, I think that's what people really don't understand is 
there's no one case of lupus that's like the next, you know. I mean, people have different symptoms and different things are affected and, uh, you know, it can um, affect your joints and your skin and your kidneys, your blood cells, your heart, your lungs. And, you know, you start developing problems in one area and then something else happens and so then you've got double trouble basically and you know it's just it's really sad that there are people out there that have to live with it and deal with it um and yeah I would love to see more promotion of the walk for lupus and I love the skip to my lupus that is such a unique name I just love that I know isn't it great um, I had a chance, uh, the, the l- woman at the very end of the video um, that uh, I'm speaking with uh, right before the video closes uh, is uh, Tamara, f- who runs uh, Skip to My Lupus. And, you know, I've networked uh, with her through Facebook over the past, uh, I don't know, two years. And this was, unfortunately, only the first time that I've actually had to meet, uh, got to meet her in person. And uh, she has such a heart for... Uh, this demographic of people that are suffering with this disease and you know like you said meeting that one couple and the daughter that uh, lost um, their oldest daughter to uh, to the disease it was you know while I was filming it I was choking up myself because I mean what I didn't include just out of respect uh, because I you know I, I wanted to make sure that I stayed tasteless the the mother you know she broke down while her daughter was speaking and you know it's just it's it, something like that is just so fresh and it's and unfortunately it surrounded this um it surrounded an event you know the high school graduation um that you know that that's always going to be something that stings and i feel you know i i felt really empathetic with them uh for that but uh i i definitely agree i i really hope that we can uh help raise more awareness with Sco- skip to my lupus uh if not nationally uh definitely on a localized level absolutely and um you know i can definitely uh get the word out there about that and you know sadly i had not even heard that that was going to be taking place i didn't know until i saw it uh promoted on your facebook page and uh went to it and and looked at it so you know i was sad to hear that i didn't know about that and you know i I missed it because i certainly would have uh come out there to uh take part in that well everybody listening and watching uh feel free to continue to send me information about things that are coming up so that i can get it out there uh beforehand let me know at least you know uh two weeks to a month beforehand so that we can get this information out there so uh people like beth can show up to uh your event Absolutely. That sounds great. Um, no, no. <laughs> you know, and another thing, go ahead. No, no, I was just about to ask you uh, what, probably what you're about to say. <laughs> well, I was just going to say a couple of other things about lupus that um, not everybody um, might know, but going back to symptoms, um, you know, a lot of times symptoms with a particular disease are very generalized. Mm-hmm. Um, but with lupus, because it does affect so many different organs, um, you know, you can have symptoms as simple as fatigue and fever, um, weight loss or weight gain, but then you get it more into the joint pain, stiffness and swelling. And some of those things just, you know, might seem simple and it might just be, oh, well, I'm tired. I've, I've been under a lot of stress. I'm just not feeling good. You know, but these are symptoms that are real and that can um, definitely um uh, symbolize something more severe, um, hair loss or rash on the face, having sores in your mouth, um, shortness of breath and chest pain, anxiety, depression, depression and, and memory loss. Um, wow. And the, the, the really bad thing is, you know, experts and doctors don't know what causes it. So, you know, there's you're kind of at a catch-22. You know you've got it, but you don't know what caused it. And, I mean, there's, you know, certain risk factors. Um, for lupus, lupus is more common in women. It affects people of all ages, but mm-hmm. you usually see it in um, people ages 15 to 40. Um, I just recently learned of a girl that I graduated with um, from high school that is suffering from lupus, and she's really having a hard time with it. Um, 
lupus is also more common in African Americans, Hispanics, and Asians. Right. And if you've ever been infected by the Epstein Barr virus, that actually is a risk factor as well. You know, all these things that uh, show up and, you know, you find out about, I mean, when I went there, uh, like you just said, it's uh, most common in African Americans. Uh, you said Hispanics as well? Yeah, and I, it, I, I learned that. And Asians, you know, I, I show up and, yes, there was a uh, large amount of African-American people uh, hanging out in the food court waiting before the show, and I, or not show, not show, but before the walk. And I'm, you know, I, I walk in and, now I knew that a little bit, but I'm not really, um, I wasn't really knowledgeable about uh, lupus until after the walk was done. Um, I took some of the information, some of the literature that they had there, and then I came home, learned a little bit more about it. Um, but thing is, there there were uh, you know there were Caucasian people out there there, um, you know, and I did see a few Hispanics and I believe a few Asians as well. Uh, so I mean, it does range, you know, and and it seems like it doesn't really matter the age of the person. You know, it can strike some, it can hit someone uh, extremely young. I mean, the girl that. Uh, had uh, lost the battle right before or right after high school, um, but there's also elderly people that suffer with it, and there are people that have gone through all their lives having it. Having it. Um, if you don't mind me, asking, well, if you could tell me, if you know, uh, what would cause the fatality rate? Is it would it be something that would kind of piggyback on the disease? Well, I think it's more um, a lot. A lot of times with lupus, the way it's treated, you actually treat your signs and symptoms. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, you can have lupus and lupus cause you to have, you know, problems with your heart or problems with your lungs. And I think sometimes um, the lupus is the primary reason, um, but I think it just progresses so much that it causes other organs to fail. And that is probably what um, causes, you know, the fatality. Um you know, a lot of the medications that are used range from uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories to high-dose corticosteroids and also immunosuppressive medication, which really drives your immune system down and makes you susceptible to catching other things. And over the long term, taking medications like that can really wear your body down. And I think it's just a combination of things that, you know, that cause people to um, to die from lupus, and that's just, it's really sad. It's like you want to treat the disease so you can live your life and feel good, but in turn, over time, those treatments, you know, hurt hurt you. Right. I mean, it's just, you know, so it's, it's, it's just really hard. It's a very hard disease to understand, but, um, you know, if, if people have lupus, you know, you want to, Make sure you get plenty of rest. Be smart about being in the sun. You know, definitely wear sunscreen and stay covered. Wear a hat um, because a lot of the medications that you can take um, are affected by the sun, but also your skin is affected by the lupus. So right. um, you want to make sure they get plenty of exercise and, and try to keep healthy that way. And, of course, don't smoke and try to eat as healthy as you can. But, you know, if you're on a medication like an immunosuppressant medication, you really need to be mindful about being in large groups of people, especially during flu season and being around people that are sick, um, you know, try to wear a mask if you can to protect yourself from any kind of, um, you know, people that might be coughing or sneezing around you. So right. you don't pick up because you will, you know, and, and somebody that has a low immune system, you know, if they get what would be a cold to you or I, could be the flu to them. Right. You know, so, so it's tripled. So, you know, you really, really want to be careful. Well, um, th that is definite good information to have. Um, everybody, on the, again, on the line, we have Beth Barranco. She is a registered nurse here in the CSRA. You can also see her on NBC Augusta uh, in her Healthy You segment. I saw you posted on Facebook a little bit earlier uh, today about uh, what, what were those, mini goats? <laughs> they were okay. They're miniature donkeys, and this, I did a segment this morning on pet therapy, and, um, and we really had a good time with it this morning. And um, I brought one of my four dogs, um, Ginger. She is a mix of a Chihuahua and a Poodle, and I have her mother, who's a full-blooded Poodle. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, I, I brought her with me, and basically, we were just talking about pet therapy and how you know pets are used for. 
um, to help people that are chronically ill or that are widowed. And, you know, uh, just recently they had a guy um, on a news program talking about uh, he was a war veteran and he was really um, wanting to commit suicide. And he had found this dog over in Afghanistan and they had become companions. And uh, he said he was very close to committing suicide and the dog walked up to him and licked his ear and looked at him and he just, he said the dog looked at him like, what am I going to do if you're not here to take care of me? And so, you know, just talking Hmm. about how, you know, we as humans can bond with an animal and how they can really have a healing effect on people that are chronically ill and that suffer from, you know, uh, disease and uh, loneliness and depression and things like that. So, yeah, I um, we've got some friends, uh, Dwayne and Paige Courtney, um, over in Aiken that have a farm, and they've got two miniature donkeys. And Fonzie and Brewster are their names, and nice. I have had a ball with them. I love to go out. They love pretzels, and so I'll go out there and feed them. And I had some pictures of that this morning, and uh, for whatever reason, we couldn't get the pictures to pull up. So <laughs> I posted them on my Facebook page. Um, of the of the two miniature donkeys, but they are just they're precious, and I, you know, I was trying to just come across. You know, you can have anything as a pet as long as you're a companion and y'all are compatible and can get along. You know, any type of animal can be a pet. So you know, for them, they have uh, they have a dachshund whose name is Snoopy, and then they've got some cows. And uh, wow, it's just a regular dogs, old animal so. farm over there. It is. It's a lot of fun to go over there. So, anyway. Well, very cool. Well, again, thank you so much for calling in, uh, Beth. We we always appreciate you ha- uh, being on the show. Um, again, everybody, we were speaking with Beth Branco. She is a registered nurse here in the Augusta area. Um, and uh, next time you call in, I may, I just may refer to you as uh, what was it? Uh, was it Ellie May, or was it? Yeah, it was Ellie May from from uh, the Beverly Hillbillies, right? Yeah, and do I need to ask why? Uh, well, just, just what didn't she? Wasn't she a lover of animals? Maybe I'm getting my facts wrong, my TV facts uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, she was absolutely. Yeah. It, it, either yeah. that. Wait, you know what? You are a resident. I mean, I know you're not a doctor. You are a registered nurse, but the the title Doctor Doolittle may still apply. <laughs> yeah, I like Doctor Doolittle too. That'll well, work. Well, there you Whatever, go. I answered just about anything, so it's okay. <laughs> well, forgive me for forgive me for being an idiot. I hope you have a great day, Beth. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. I enjoyed it. Look forward to next week. Absolutely. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. All right, on the line we had uh, Beth Branco, a registered nurse uh, from the CSRA. She uh, works at one of the local hospitals here. She is also on Healthy You, which shows on NBC Augusta. We'll put up uh, some information about that as well. Um, That is pretty much the show for today, everybody. Uh, We've got pretty much... Um, we covered just about everything that we wanted to cover. Um, we do have some information about what's coming up here in Augusta uh, that we will be putting on Augusta's Choice, things from the James Brown Arena, some things that are going to be happening at the Imperial Theater. I just saw not too long ago, uh, actually a few minutes ago, from uh, Mr. Cliff Bennett. He posted on the Rock Bottom uh, music wall um, that there is tonight. Let's see here. Um, he, well... Now it's all now now it's gone. Uh, I saw something about a birthday bash going on for the Brian Adams concert. So uh, that is happening at the Imperial Theater, I believe tonight. They are completely sold out. Um, and uh, if anybody goes to the Brian Adams concert tonight and he sings everything I do, uh, I'm not going to give my rendition of it. But uh, I hold that song near and dear to my heart. Uh, but uh, if he does, or if you guys take any pictures, uh, if they allow pictures in the venue, uh, take them and post them up on Augustus Choice's Facebook page at facebook.com slash Augustus Choice. Also saw uh, that um, Karen Gordon from Garden City Jazz, she posted on the Facebook wall that she is listening right now. Big shout out to you. Um, everybody, we are just about out of here. Thank you so much for joining in on the show today. Uh, I am again, Kenny, your host from AugustusChoice.com. And uh, we will be doing this next week at 1230. We will probably be also turning this into a little bit longer of a show so that we can get some more information put in, get some, fit some more guests in, and even have some of the people from the local area give a call in um, as we open up the phone lines to have you guys uh, talk and talk about whatever the heck you want. Um, this is a great area to live in. 
and we are trying our best to help you celebrate local. I'm Kenny, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.